this is part four. The first three parts were more of a setup to get to this part and what's to come. I wanted to lay some foundation for everybody and really give a clear call for you to ask the question, maybe for the first time or maybe for, you know, first time in a long time, the question, am I going to embrace the Great Commission? Like, for real, am I going to open up to the reality that Jesus has called me to make disciples? Okay, so last time, with that in view, we looked specifically at four things Jesus did in how he made disciples, and these are the things we're called to follow. And so that's what these last four sessions are going to be about, equipping you in these areas which the first area is prayer. That's simple enough. Jesus taught us to pray and to listen to the voice of the Spirit. Okay. Second, he showed us that as we pray, God is going to open doors to step out and bless people and pray for people, pray for healings and miracles and to do all kinds of great, generous things for people. Three is then sharing our faith. And then four is going further and befriending people, inviting them to learn more. So basically, today begins a four-part fishing lesson. That's what we're doing here. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men, right? So the first part, prayer, is where we're getting, we're going today, and that's how we find the fish, particularly the fish that God has prepared for us to catch, okay? Prayer leads the way. And this is like what we saw in the story when Jesus in the Gospel of Luke, when he told Simon and the boys, I'm going to make you fishers of men, he said, go out into deep water. And he led them and showed them where to go, where to catch this amazing catch of fish. And so God wants to guide us in where and who and when, all of that, where to go, who to go to. Which, by the way, he said to them, go out into deep water. It's often the same for us. Often the fruit, the, the impact is out leaving the shore of what we're comfortable in, leaving our little shell and getting involved in people's lives, in the community, and in pursuing particular relationships with more intentionality, more of a focus, not willing to just give up at the first sign of rejection. So God will put people and places on your heart as you pray, and it's learning to be sensitive to that and learning. It's a lifelong thing of learning how to follow his leading, okay? So that's the first part we're going to get into. Um, the second part, just to continue to give you an overview of these fishing lessons, is the second part's like the bait, okay? That's where we find those opportunities to step out and bless people and pray for them and then watch God do miracles for real, all right? Let me just uh, let me just give a quick disclaimer here, actually, because this fishing thing could be really misunderstood. All right, fishermen go about catching fish by trapping them and killing them. Just want to address the big fish in the room. Jesus came to reverse things. We're called to catch the fish of people to set them free and give them life. There you go. Catch and release, someone said. So we're not trying to hook people into a religion or manipulate them into a system. We're talking about really sweet hooks of grace and truth because people need help getting out of the water they're swimming in. They do. How will someone know unless they hear? This is a verse in the book of Romans. How will they know? And how will they hear unless someone goes to them? People need help getting out of their heads, out of their stress and their pain and their deception to realize, hey, 
there's more to life. And there's more to this Jesus thing. So praying for people opens the way for that. And then when we step out and we bless people in specific ways, and then we, we look for opportunities to share with them, that has then the potential to wake someone up from the watery deception of this world. And this is a noble task. This is not manipulation. It's not being a salesman. I'm telling you, the church in America has grown really comfortable, too comfortable in this area. People need to be shaken up with love, with grace, with gentleness and respect, right? We read that passage. Speak to people, but with gentleness and respect. So we're not talking about shoving it down people's throats, but people need to hear. And they won't hear unless we're going after those opportunities. Okay, the third part that we're going to go through in all of this is the hook. That's where we grab on to people, uh, grab their hearts with the message of truth, right? Once the door has been opened in a relationship or in a moment of prayer or whatever. So that's where we talk to people about the kingdom of God. We call them to come home. We ask them questions about faith. And then the final part, the fourth part, as, as they're open to that, when they're open to it, this is where it's all headed, this is where we reel them in. We don't just leave them there. Like Jesus, we invite them to come and learn more. We invite them into a closer relationship and we follow up with them. We pray with them. We share our lives with them even. And uh, we're going to give some tools for how to do that when we get to the uh, closing sessions. But those are the four main things that we're breaking down now over the next month. Prayer, blessing people as God leads, sharing the message, and discipling, befriending, and helping people grow. Okay? All right. So today's session is going to focus on the first part, prayer. And uh, I'm going to tell you in 30 minutes everything you need to know about prayer. I'm glad you got the joke because, yeah, that is obviously a joke. Here is what I am going to do by the grace of God with this topic. I'm going to give you today five quick things, five little encouragements, five things that are like little tiny keys. And keys are meaningless unless you use them. Um, these keys that I'm going to share with you, these five things, will be meaningless unless you use them, you apply them. But these keys I'm going to give you, I promise, though they seem very small and simple as keys usually are, they open up huge rooms of treasure. Amazing things. So if you put into practice these simple things we're going to talk about over the next half hour, it will lead to tremendous impact. And the fifth key that we're going to end with is going to give some very clear direction. It's an assignment that I'm going to give you, and, and hopefully it's something you can follow up with and talk with a friend or a group that you're with about. And if you're watching this, you'll need a half sheet of paper uh, for this final part. Okay? So are we ready to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ? He already called you to it. He already said you're worthy of it. He already spoke this into your, into your future. So we might as well get on with it. Well, Lord, help us right now. Lord, come as the great equipper, the great fisher of men, and empower us, Jesus. Give us Grace to be people who set others free. Teach us how to do this, especially this first part about prayer. May this message leave a mark that goes way beyond this little time we have together. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so let's look at key number one here. First thing about prayer I want to say today is that when you pray, you are to come boldly. I'm going to move through this very quickly. 
this first part of prayer is that when you pray, you come before God with a confidence, not arrogance, a deep confidence. And for this part, I'm just going to remind you of the opening session of Arise, where we talked about communion and spending time with Jesus, looking to have at least that hour at some point during the week, right? So a lot of this is going back, referring to that session. But the most important thing that we need to do in this place of connecting with God in prayer is first remembering who God is and who you are. So when we talk about prayer for open doors and for breakthrough in people's lives so that we can advance the kingdom, this is the first step into seeing real breakthrough in people's lives, what we're talking about here. When we approach that in prayer, we want to first come to God with a confidence that we are his beloved children. So when we pray, we want to call to mind. We want to speak out loud. We want to meditate on what the blood of Jesus is all about. Okay? The finished work of, the Christ, uh, of Christ, God's Son. This is, this is never meant to grow old. This never becomes something just for beginners. We carry this until the day we meet God face to face in the flesh. We have to regularly remind our souls. We have to remind our souls that we are forgiven and that God has deep pleasure in us, for us. When you know that you're clean and that you're delightful to God, that, when that's filling your heart, faith comes with it. It creates an atmosphere of faith in your heart. And faith is this connection point between heaven and earth. I don't know all the answers of why God designed it that way. I think we're going to be blown away in eternity when we see why he chose faith to be so important. It's going to make total sense. But faith is the connection point between heaven and earth. It's not how loud you pray. It's not how long you pray. It's faith. Faith is what answers prayer. And faith is so important, but it comes so much easier to the person who is satisfied in God's love, who knows how much God loves them. It just empowers you to pray and talk to God in a different way. And this is where I would remind you of what Jesus said to his disciples when they came up to him. And they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said to them, okay, you start with this, our dad, who art in heaven, dad, Abba, father. That's where he told us to start because when we come to him knowing who we are, because you, you, by you calling him father, that means something about you. You're his daughter, you're his son, that causes things to click more and more, knowing that he's a provider, knowing he's your covering, knowing he's your protection, okay? So when you go to pray, say things like this out loud or in your heart, okay? Thank you, God, that you love me. Thank you, Jesus, that your blood removed my sin. You made me holy and pure. Thank you that you love me and you delight in me. God, I come as your child. You are good. You are so, so, so good and faithful. I worship you. So hear my request. Father, I bring this request to you. I want to talk to you about something. Move into prayer like that. You can even visualize yourself coming before the Father or Jesus and seeing his smile. If you're a visual person, I recommend using imagery in your mind when you pray. Okay, I told you we'd move quickly. That's number one in prayer. Come boldly. Number two, key number two, is make requests. Make requests. We're keeping it very simple today. And I want you to look with me for a moment at a scripture in Ephesians chapter 6. This is verses 18 and 19. 
Paul, the apostle's writing here, and he says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. All right, if you remember, this is very similar to a key passage we read in the last few sessions, Colossians 4, where Paul told the Colossian church to pray and to pray for him that God would open doors and give him boldness and grace to speak the message of the kingdom. He's doing that here in a totally different letter. I think he probably did it in other letters that aren't in our Bible. Like Paul knew that this was really important. He's writing again to another group of people and he knows that we have to be praying for open doors for the gospel. We have to pray for the grace to speak when those opportunities come. We have to ask for grace because there's resistance and he gets into that resistance earlier in Ephesians 6. He talks about spiritual forces that are keeping this world in blindness. So prayer is a way of breaking through the spiritual atmosphere. Again, we don't understand all of it now. We're not gonna understand it fully until in eternity one day, but there's something about prayer that, that is beautiful and it's a way God designed things to happen, to move from heaven to earth to come. Okay, so as you come to God to pray, as you remember how good he is and how good you are, as his child, you get that deep into you, all right? It's good to then ask God for things. Make requests. Ask for stuff. It's okay. It's good. Ask for your own needs. It's fine. He wants you to. Talk to him. Pray for things that pertain to you. But in that, definitely pray for others and pray regularly for these open doors and for the grace to share about Jesus. Pray for divine appointments. Pray that God would open up certain people's hearts. Pray for specific people in your sphere of influence. Pray that God would give them divine encounters, that he would draw them to himself, that light would break through the darkness around them. This is when you know you're really praying his will. All right. So when you pray, Come boldly and make requests. Next. Number three. Number three is listen. Listen. Okay, this part is even more important than, than your requests. Requests are good. We need to make requests every day, every hour sometimes. And we want to pray for specific people. We want to talk to God about them. But as we do that, we have to invest a big part of the conversation with God into listening for him to speak back. Prayer is a conversation. God wants to speak back to us. So in that verse we just read from Ephesians, Paul said to pray in the spirit. Now, that can have to do with praying in tongues, which we talked about a little bit back in facet 7. That's very helpful if that gift is flowing in you. But this also means that we should just be in tune with our spirit, our inner spirit. We all have a spirit inside of us that's deeper than your mind or your emotions. So what you're thinking or feeling is not the deepest truth about you. This is really good news. You have a spirit. You have an inner being that is connected to God all the time. Every moment, your spirit is connected with Jesus. Now, your mind is, by virtue of being one package, your mind is connected too, but it's not always in sync. Your mind can be filled with all kinds of distractions, good or bad. And your body is connected too, because it's all one package, but that can be distracted as well if there's pain or other things. The body is not bad. 
The mind is not bad. But you want to learn how to go deeper and listen to the spirit within, the spirit of God who is one with your spirit. So this means learning to be quiet, learning to have quiet times, literally, setting apart quiet time. But it's, it's also learning to inwardly focus when there's chaos around you too. So doing the laundry, driving to work, whatever, God wants to teach us how to tune into our spirit. And that is prayer. You're praying just by being attentive to God. You don't have to make requests to pray. Prayer is just at its deepest level. It's just being aware that God is with you and in you. And listen, this is not meant to be like really crazy, mystical, hard. Like this is actually easy and it gets easier the more you practice it. I want to practice it for a moment. Right now, I want to call attention to your spirit. Okay, right now, I want everyone listening to sit up with good posture, but stay comfortable. And I want you to close your eyes. One of the best ways to be still and meditate or focus on your spirit or the spirit of God within you is to sit kind of upright with good posture. It just helps your body not to get too lazy so that you zone out. But you don't want to be too stiff or in some weird meditative position that that becomes a distraction also. So just be comfortable, but sit and keep your eyes closed. And right now, first, we're going to go out and then in. I want you to start by being aware of your body. With your eyes closed right now, just become aware of your body right now. Your breathing. Your physical senses. Is there pain somewhere? Is there hunger What's going on with your body? Just become aware that you have a body right now. Okay, now, keep your eyes closed. Let's become aware of the soul. The soul is the mind and the emotions. There's more to it than that, but that's the gist. We'll start with your mind. Become aware of your mind, your thoughts. Be aware of just your thinking right now, your reasoning, your judging. You have a mind with thoughts and judgments and ideas. Just become aware of that for a moment. And now I want to shift over to your emotions. This can be a little hard for some people. Locating this can be tough. Sometimes it's kind of in the heart, in the chest area. It could be further down towards the stomach, or maybe it's just something over you, like a hood, a hoodie. But what are you feeling? What have you been feeling that you might not even be aware of because you've been stuck in your mind? Or maybe focused on the needs of your body, that you're neglecting your emotions. What's the emotion, the feeling All right, I'm sorry for rushing this, but you might want to pause this if you're watching this and do this exercise more slowly or do it another time later, but I want to shift again, and now I want to focus on your spirit. Eyes closed. Your spirit is a deep inner place. It's deeper than your mind and your emotions. And you, it's a place that you find by faith, meaning you don't necessarily feel it right away. You, you just choose to believe it's there quietly underneath all the stuff of your mind and emotions and body, like a little spring of water deep at the ocean floor, far below the waves. It's like a center point within you. 
For some, it's in the heart area. For others, it's more in the core, in the gut. But it's a place of peace. It's a deep well. And God is there. Christ is there. Okay, open your eyes. Whether you're having a focused time, like we just had, or you're just going about your day, you can learn to tune into your spirit. And the more that you practice that and you do it more and more, um, it really becomes a lot easier. And do it especially when you come before God and you come boldly and begin making requests. Take moments in the conversation to be still, to listen, to trust his spirit is within you. This is very important because God will speak to you through your spirit. This is the last thing I want to say about listening, okay? God will speak through your spirit, but it comes up out into your mind and emotions sometimes. So his voice may sound like your own thoughts because it's coming into that realm. But it actually, when it's his voice, it came from somewhere deeper, not something your own mind initiated. And God's voice can be like a whisper. Now, there are many ways that God speaks, of course. He, foundationally, God speaks through the scriptures. I mean, that is the key way to go and hear from God. But God will speak from your spirit, not just in thoughts, but in your mind through pictures and visions and even dreams when you go to sleep. God loves to speak in metaphor. Jesus always taught these stories called parables that were filled with metaphors. Metaphors are symbols. So God will give you symbols. He'll give you symbolic things, and, and we have to then ask for help interpreting what does that symbol mean in that dream, in that picture. We ask God for understanding. Sometimes we ask others. We pray and ask for others for help. So this is a huge topic. I mean, we're going to put some books that we recommend uh, in this subject out there as part of this curriculum. Um, we encourage people to really go after this and learn more. But there's so many ways he speaks. On the outside, God speaks through movies, through music. He'll speak through random coincidences, right, in your life. We have to be listening internally and our eyes open and alert externally for God to speak to us always. But when you pray for people and for open doors, God will speak to you and give you ideas. He'll give you direction. He may even tell you something about that person you're praying for so that you could either you know, continue praying more specifically or you might, he might be telling you to share that with that person to actually share something with them that God told them for you to tell them. We call that prophesying. It's just sharing the heart of God for someone else. So, I need to move on, but that's listening. That's key, a key part of prayer. Okay, key four, moving forward, is don't give up. Okay? Okay? Don't give up. Prayer changes things. Even though we do not see answers many times, heaven looks down at those who persevere and pray anyway, and I'm telling you, they cheer us on. You have no idea what's happening in the spiritual atmosphere because you prayed and you chose to not stop praying. In that passage we read from Ephesians, Paul tells the church, he said, and always keep on praying. Meaning don't stop because those spiritual powers and forces he mentioned earlier, they will come against your prayers. There are spiritual forces that are at work to keep people blind to the truth. 
And these spiritual forces are part of the reason we don't always see prayer answered right away. But prayer changes things, and it still releases breakthrough in the spiritual realm when we don't give up. This isn't something you just try on for a little bit. This is life. This is for life. Like Jesus, this is to become our lifeblood, how we live in dialogue with God. We have to pray and not give up. So, very simple here. We come boldly before God in prayer. We make requests, which should start including praying for open doors and praying for specific people, all of that. And then we listen. We listen for God. We quiet ourselves and tune into his spirit within us. We pray, we ask, we listen, and then we do it again. And we don't stop until the end of our days. We do it alone and we do it with other people. We especially do it with other people. This is essential. The church in the Bible, God's people, is called a house of prayer. This is who we are. So when we gather with other believers, prayer should always be part of that gathering at the center. Okay, how's everybody doing? How's that place of the spirit inside of you? Is that nice? Yeah. There's a well we can drink from anytime, anytime. Okay, well, this brings us to the final part, the fifth key here, which is an oikos map. All right, so this is where we put all of this into something very tangible that you can start using right away to begin praying for breakthrough in the people and places around you. Let me run through this real quick, and then we're going to make one together. We're going to make an oikos map today. The word oikos is from the Bible, from the Greek. It's the Greek word in Scripture for an extended household. It has to do with your sphere of relationships, which is your sphere of influence. You have influence. You have an influence in people's lives, whether you see it, believe it or not. So what you do for this is that you're going to take a half sheet of paper and you're going to write your name in the middle and circle it. Just wait for a moment because I'm going to demonstrate it first, okay? You're going to write your name and then you're going to write the names of other people who don't know God yet. And you could even include also certain places, certain things you're involved in where there's a whole group of people who don't know God, okay? So this should encompass seven areas primarily, and I want to put this on the screen for you. It obviously includes your family. That's one. Extended family, immediate family. It includes your neighbors, your neighborhood, it includes friends, right? Coworkers, or if you're a student, fellow students. It would include service industries. So your hairdresser, your barista. It would include leisure stuff in your life. So clubs, hobbies, sports activities. And there is a very special place the Lord has called us to focus on, which is the poor. We can't lose sight of this, that God does call us to keep our eyes open to those who are incredibly down and out, who are poor. That could be financially or in every other way, but yeah, that's the last area there. So we're going to keep those areas in mind, and in a moment, we're going to pray and ask God to lead us in making this map. We're going to practice coming before God boldly and making one request. God, help me to develop this map. Father, show me the people you want me to include. And then we're going to listen and write and listen a little bit. So I'm going to demonstrate here. If you could bring up that, that board, I'm going to write my name for you. And then because I'm being recorded, I'm going to change the names of the people on my Oikos map.
Thank you. All right. That's good. Okay. So, me in the middle here. Nick. All right. I'm doing it a little big. You got to be sensitive to the space that you're working with because you don't want to overwhelm yourself with too many names, but you want to leave room for enough. So, you know, so going through that list, you know, I have family. Okay. Say I got a cousin named Lorraine. I got an Aunt Judy. Aunt Judy has a little boy, Roger. All right, I have, I have a neighbor, right? Two houses down, wonderful woman named Rose. Rose lives with someone named uh, Walt. Okay. Um, so I'm going to write a place that I'll visit and go to somewhat often in town. The, I'm going to write the town library. So there's a place I see people and interact with people. I don't necessarily have someone specific, but I'm going to write that and I'm going to write, I'm going to write Facebook too, just because there's people I connect with on Facebook that I want to be spiritually sensitive to and pray for God to shine light there. All right, well, let's see. My daughter has a soccer coach named Matt. And let's see. Somebody at Starbucks that I see Every couple weeks when I go, his name's Tom. Okay. So I'd say this is a little small. I think you could fill it in a little bit more, but that's kind of the gist of it. This right here becomes a prayer map. And this is a strategy that I believe the Lord has given us for this part about prayer. This is so vital. Praying for breakthrough we can't move forward without this. And this map here is a great thing to, to lock ourselves into and to keep us focused. So, listen, I know nobody listening to this wants to go out and yell at people about God. Nobody here wants to beat people over the head with the Bible. But I know everyone who's tracking with me on this wants to see people awaken to Jesus. We want people to come into that freedom, to come into the kingdom. That is not going to happen if we just stay here and keep doing the same things over and over again. In order to see this happen, we have to go to those places as Jesus' follower, to those people and situations. But we need divine help. We need God to prepare the way spiritually. We need grace for divine opportunities. Which, by the way, doesn't mean you wait for perfect opportunities. just want to point that out too. There will never be a perfect, perfect opportunity to talk to people or pray with someone. There'll always be a reason to, to not take the risk. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a risk. But... The point is, we need to pray for open doors, for God to bring us into those situations and to give us the courage and the wisdom to step out. So when you make yours now in a moment, I want to encourage you to keep this somewhere. Keep it in your Bible, maybe fold it up and put it in a wallet or a purse. I've heard some people will put it in a Ziploc bag and then keep it in the shower so they can pray when they're in the shower. Or maybe you leave it in a special place where you can pray in the morning or evening, maybe in your car. I don't know. 
But we're going to develop it now and we're going to keep it. And I want to encourage you to use it. And I want to encourage you to talk to your friends and even pray with others for the people on your Oikos map. Okay? So to reiterate here before I release you, we pray by coming to God boldly as his child. Then we make specific requests for specific people and places, which is why having this map is helpful. And that's when we start to see change. That's when we start to see people getting impacted because you'll also start listening. God will speak to you about those people and places, and he will give you direction to step out. I may wake up one morning, and I just get this idea that, you know, I should bake something. Excuse me, let me start over. I should ask my wife to bake something for Rose down the street. Because I just, I don't know, that would just be not, you might, I might wake up with that idea and that's the Holy Spirit putting that in there to open up a door for friendship, for conversation. And so that's the listening part, okay? And always remember the fourth key that we don't give up. We don't give up. We have to continue to pray for these people, even if some of them stay on the list for years. Some will not. You will be surprised at what starts to happen as we get more intentional about this and we believe for this. You're going to see things begin to happen in these relationships and places. But some people, it, it could take years and years, and God doesn't give up on people. We don't give up on people. Okay. So let's do this right now. For those watching this, get your paper and then pray. Ask God to help you make this map and take as much time as you need. We're going to take about five to seven minutes here before I release you. So we'll put those categories back on the screen. And if you're watching this, you can pause that or rewind and, and uh, go back and look at that. But just remember to stop and listen. Ask the Holy Spirit, am I missing anybody? And a face or a name might pop into your mind through your spirit. So let me just send you off with prayer here. Father, first of all, we, we ask again that you would truly help us to pray and to enjoy prayer and to pray your heart and to never stop praying until we see miracles and change. God, bless these maps that we're making. Bless every one of them. Speak to us and guide us as we write down names and places. And then give us the grace, Father, to follow through and use this and to pray for these people. We ask this, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. I'll leave you to your maps.